A beacon of light built on visionary leadership, scientific rigor, compassionate patient care, and an ethos of humility and service. Bascom Palmer Eye Institute celebrates 60 years of excellence in patient care, innovative vision research, education, and service to its communities. With its numerous accolades and continual growth, it's hard to imagine the Institute was once the dream of one ophthalmologist who planted the seed for something much bigger than himself. In 1923, Bascom Heaton Palmer opened one of Miami's first ophthalmology practices. He predicted Miami would eventually be home to a world-class center for eye care, second to none in the nation. His dream was realized in 1958 when the University of Miami Medical School created the Division of Ophthalmology and appointed Dr. Edward Norton as its chief. Four years later, Bascom Palmer Eye Institute opened its doors, ushering in a new era in eye care. Guided by the vision of Dr. Norton, the principles established and demonstrated by the first founding five ophthalmologists, all extraordinary clinicians and educators, including Victor Curtin, Lawton Smith, Donald Gass, and John Flynn, lit a torch that still burns today. If you look at the initial leaders of the Bascom Palmer Institute, they were here to serve others, to be able to excel at the Bascom Palmer Institute. You have to be a team player. People like the founders absolutely imbue one humility, hard work, excellence, dedication to teaching. It was about the patients and the residents and the fellows and the program and the mission. Dr. Curtin instilled, as well as the faculty really in general, this sort of sense of consciousness. And he would always say to us, it's not what you learn here technically, but it's the judgment that you learn and take with you. And that has always stuck with me. We had the advantage of being in a small building and anytime we had a question or a problem, uh, Dr. Norton was available, Dr. Gass was available, so we, we really had immediate response of the uh, professorships that we had there, which was really, uh, really terrific. I remember so well that very first day when Dr. Norton, the chief, called us together, the first year residents, and basically one thing that he did was he gave me this indirect lens, which I still use every day. That was impressive, but even more than that was what he told us all when he said, you know, here you are, you're at Bascom Palmer. I can't tell you that you're going to become the greatest ophthalmologist in the world for training. But I do believe that if you apply yourself, you'll have the opportunity to become the greatest ophthalmologist that you can be. The ethos that he created the environment where he brought in the best possible people he could find and then freed them to do what they did best, I think has served the Institute well over the decades. For Bascom Palmer, the 1970s was a decade of remarkable growth. The Institute had outgrown its original home and would need a new and much larger eye hospital. With private sector support, a generous donation from the Miami Lighthouse for the Blind, and rigorous fundraising efforts, the Ann Bates Leach Eye Hospital opened in 1976. In the 1980s, growth continued with the completion of the Renner Education Center, the renovation and expansion of the McKnight Vision Research Center, and the opening of the Norton Library of Ophthalmology. Following Dr. Norton's retirement in 1991, after more than 30 years as the chief, Dr. John Clarkson took the helm. During Dr. Clarkson's tenure, Bascom Palmer received its first number one ranking from U.S. News & World Report, an achievement the Institute would receive 20 more times and counting. I was there for the start of the new number one ranking, and it was great. There was a, there was a sense of camaraderie, there was a sense of esprit de corps. Everyone was excited about it. We we're number one, we got to stay number one. Let's go. After five years, John Clarkson became Dean of the University of Miami School of Medicine. Bascom Palmer's long tradition of groundbreaking work and expansion continued under the leadership of Drs. Richard Parrish, Richard Forster, Carmen Pugliafito, and Eduardo Alfonso.
Bascom Palmer is in a very unique position to continuously innovate because of the people who are here always thinking. It spans generations. In reality, you could go down the list of faculty members at Bascom Palmer from the beginning through today and you would find that most of them, if not all of them, have made significant contributions to our knowledge of ophthalmology and to the improvement of vision. Vitrectomy had been developed in 1970 by Dr. Robert Mockamer. There were constant developments, new developments in vitrectomy surgery uh, during that decade. John Marie Perel, who's still on the faculty, invented something called a vitreous infusion suction cutter and very importantly a light pipe that would shine light into the back of the eye so the surgeon could actually see what they were doing. And these absolutely revolutionized the ability to do retinal surgery. The Ophthalmic Biophysics Center was created in 1970 by Dr. Norton, the founder of the Bascom Palmer, and Neil Olmey. And it was created only for one single reason, and that is to help the clinician of the institute better patient care. And as a result, over 350 instruments, new instruments that didn't exist, were actually built, tested in our own laboratory, and actually used in the clinic or in the operating room. And Dr. Phil Rosenfeld was the first to sort of pioneer the use of Avastin in patients and anti-VEGF was just coming along and we he really pioneered both the safety and the efficacy of use of Avastin, which is now widespread throughout the retina community across the United States. Over the past 20 years, we've seen a lot of changes. We've gone into small gauge vitrectomy with no sutures placed, which is quite a bit different from the 70s. We do uh, laser treatments, pharmacotherapies and silicone oil that are widely available today and not available back then. And so the outcomes of surgery have gotten better and better. One of the most disruptive technologies that came through was OCT, which is a way of imaging the retina that really changed the way we take care of patients. And when I was a resident, Dr. Pugliafito joined as chair, and he was one of the inventors of OCT. I was involved in the development of a femtosecond laser to perform and facilitate cataract surgery to make it more accurate and safer. Carol Karp has really done landmark work in the treatment of conjunctival tumors. Doug Anderson, who helped to define what is called normal tension glaucoma. Paul Pomberg and Rich Parrish included cancer treatments in the management of glaucoma patients. I think what makes Baskin Palmer a place where innovation can grow is the fact that we have a team of um, investigators who work with each other, who always want to be the best, who want to be in the forefront of the research field. One of the extraordinary innovations I have seen is really into the era of gene therapy. Looking back, I appreciate how much innovation was happening right next to me as I was training to, to be the, the best ophthalmologist I could be. During my time, uh, we, uh, we saw such things as beginning of gene therapy. Janet Davis was just starting to do some earlier trials, working with Dr. Lamb and Dr. Nell Gregory. Back in 2014, we implanted the first Argus II retinal prosthesis. Then in 2015, I implanted the first veteran. I think that's really what makes this type of work special because these patients who have never had any treatment options and now we are able to provide it to them. We have a lot of preclinical research examining how we can get an optic nerve to actually regrow after injury. So we have some really cutting edge approaches that have been developed here to identify some of these growth factors. So that's super exciting. Baskin Palmer Ocular Microbiology is unique mainly because it's one of the only ones that still exists in the United States, but also because of the collaboration between the clinicians, laboratory, and research scientists focusing on one thing, that is improving patient outcomes in ocular infectious disease. 
the idea that you can expand the knowledge base, that you're not limited by what's previously known, is a concept that uh, guarantees innovation and, and more research. And if you do that in an ethical manner, which has been taught and inculcated in the residents and fellows and faculty members, you can't help but have success overall. Since its first residency class in 1962, Bascom Palmer is proud of its engaged, vibrant, and worldwide community of 1,400 alumni, including 48 chairs of academic medical centers and graduates who have gone on to provide outstanding care in their local communities. Bascom Palmer Eye Institute has always prioritized its educational mission, and our training programs have been considered the crown jewel of the Institute. Uh, many of our graduates join academic institutions as faculty members and they in turn teach others. So you can see how this results in an exponential dissemination of ophthalmic knowledge and excellence in patient care, which is really a robust way to influence the field of ophthalmology. When I speak for industry or when I uh, speak in, at a meeting and, and you're introduced and the the most important thing someone will say when they introduce me is that Dr. Eifrig was a resident and fellow at Bascom Palmer Eye Institute. I think that garners immediate respect. You're instantly considered someone who, who probably has the best, if not some of the best training you could possibly obtain. When you end up with those seven residents each year, they truly are the best of the best in every sense of the word. It's, these are people that you'd want taking care of us as we get older, as we move forward. These are people that you know that the field will be in good hands as we move forward, and that's really humbling. Bascom Palmer's dedication to providing compassionate patient care has its roots in the Institute's supportive culture of physicians, trainees, nurses, and staff members. Here in the emergency room as a resident where you spend a lot of time, you are seeing truly the gamut. I mean, the entire range from the simplest, uh, most common presentation to the most rare. And what makes it more amazing is the experience of caring for some of these complicated patients allows you to interact with our renowned faculty who have had even years of seeing these kind of cases. Bascom Palmer's professionals are making a difference in communities throughout South Florida and around the world by participating in local health fairs and national and international disaster relief efforts and creating medical programs that are relevant and applicable to the practice of ophthalmology, showcasing the latest technologies and highlighting the field's emerging trends. Through our service programs that we've been doing both locally and globally, we've really had an impact in not only taking care of patients here in the South Florida area, but also across the world. We have our large mobile vision van, which uh, is equipped with sort of the state-of-the-art uh, slit lamps and technology to be able to take a patient really from the beginning of an eye exam to the end. It's been deployed to areas where there have been disasters. When we go to our mission trips, we try to create an environment that can be sustained in the mission. So we want to create something that is long-lasting and meaningful and that's what we are doing in our annual Galapagos mission trip. We are lucky here that we, we have the best training possible and we can take care of very challenging situations and do very complex surgeries because we do it over and over again, situations that other ophthalmologists don't have because they don't see that amount of pathology that frequently or because they were not lucky to train in a place that we did. Bascom Palmer has always been a bridge to South America, Latin America, and the, and the Caribbean. CORSO, which is our international clinical course of ophthalmology, it's both an educational, interactive, social, camaraderie, building experience. Many of our ophthalmologists in South and Latin America come loyally every year for 40 years. One of the things that has struck me is that the people that I met when I was a youngster at Bascom Palmer are the same people that I met again 15 or 20 years later when I had moved up in the world. They are active people. They went from all different places in the world to Miami to get educated and they became active in their own country.
The seeds planted by Dr. Norton have not only grown into a world-class medical and research center, they have also grown into a family that shares an unbreakable bond and that continues to grow and evolve. Bascom Palmer to me has been synonymous with family. Um, regardless of where I've gone after training, I feel that if I come across someone else who is trained there, there is a common ground, that inherent sense of belonging to this unique program. And uh, having passed through there, you have this camaraderie. It was such a wonderful collegial group of, of people from the biggest name professors right on down through the fellows and the residents. Everyone was approachable. No problem or question was too small or too bothersome to any of the faculty. I'm grateful to be part of the Bascom Palmer family and thank them for all that they've done for me in my career. And I always tell the residents and fellows to look around, you know, these friends that you're training with will become your colleagues and friends throughout life. I'm thankful for Bascom Palmer for, for creating that network that we can all depend on and that carries us forward. Pretty much everyone who's in ophthalmology understands that Bascom Palmer has been a landmark program and it continues to remain that at the present time. So people understand the quality program it is and to be affiliated with that is just a wonderful association. You know the old saying, if you enjoy what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Well, that's, that's what we all feel like here. We love to come here. We love the interaction with all these incredibly smart people in the laboratory, in our training programs. A lot of our greatest ideas have come from young residents. They've carried those along in their careers, whether they're here or somewhere else. Just as the Institute has flourished in the past six decades, we now look ahead to the next 60 years. Bascom Palmer is the number one eye hospital in the U.S. simply because Bascom Palmer is making the future of vision care. This is very exciting. So your patient go to the eye clinic and then your patient will have to basically sit in front of many devices. So imagine that we're replacing all those devices with one device that is wearable, cloud-powered, and AI-powered. So this is really the, the future, and we're making that future here at Bascom Palmer. Data science is the future, and I think one of the things that I'm really excited about is that here at Bascom Palmer, we have a tremendous amount of information. I think we're well poised to really contribute to the field. The project that I'm very excited about at the moment is the work looking at the tear biopsies where I think that understanding more of the uh, genetics and the markers of, of tumors will be something that we can analyze looking at someone's tear. What gets me out of bed every single morning is seeing the impact that we're having on patients. So for example, when we, when we study pediatric tumors and we deal with the parents and the patients and see the ordeal that they have to go through, knowing that, that we're just that one step closer to developing the most effective therapies that will not only save their lives, but also preserve their vision and allow them to lead a normal, natural life is what really drives me to come to work every day and put in the hours to make sure that that happens. We are working on areas of healthcare that are really going to be game changers in the future. Personalized medicine, the ability for us to use the human genome and know exactly what are the diseases that you're likely to develop over your lifetime that will affect your vision and how can we very specifically address those through mechanisms like uh, gene therapy. The Bascom Palmer Eye Institute now is a resource to the whole world. What we've accomplished in the last 60 years has been nothing short of incredible and I can't imagine what the next 60 years are going to hold for us. 